but they're not the downtrodden menials. Let later Romans say what they will. The slaves in the tomb are surging with full life. We come up the steps, the upper world, out of the darkness. The sea breeze and the sun, the old dog shambles to his feet, the guide blows out his lap, locks the gate, we set off again, the dog trundling up to get his master's heels. The master speaks to him with soft Italian familiarity, which seems so very different from the spirit of Rome. It's utterly unlike Cervateri, though the two places are not 40 miles apart. That's page 46. <clears throat> then he goes into a tomb called the Tomb of the Leopards. Charming, cozy little room. You can see that tomb. Uh, it is a lovely, creamy gold. Uh, a beautiful color for the background. The walls of the little tomb dance with real delight. Uh, the sixth century before Christ, a vivid, life-accepting people. The dancers on the right wall move with a strange, powerful alertness onwards. The subolo plays the double flute the Etruscans love. Uh, the man in the front turns and signals with left hand holding a big wine bowl. His right, and so they move on. Long sandaled feet past live buried olive trees, swiftly going with their lungs, limbs full of life, full of life to the tips. The sense of vigorous, strong bodied liveliness is characteristic of the Etruscans and is somehow beyond art. We cannot think of art, but only life itself. The six features are bold, full of life like the dancer. And at one point he says there's more life in one of one Etruscan toe than in most people today. He thinks that, and that's quite interesting. The man at the end is holding up page 48 between thumb, skipping along every thumb, between thumb and forefinger and egg. So he tells you what the egg is. Later on he's going to tell you about uh, why people were augers and why they looked for the future in bird flight. And then he's going to tell you about the Harrow Specs. Remember that, I might ask you on an exam. The Harrow Specs, which is the person who reads livers, tell the future, and so on. And why, you, why they read the lines on the liver of animals to, to tell the future. Uh, in any case, the dancing really excites him, as you see. Uh, and then the, the egg, the mysterious egg held up by the man at the end who was no doubt the man who has died. And he's going to tell you that's where your Easter egg comes from, you see. It's a pre-Christian symbol of life. And of course, I guess, resurrection there. And then on page 49, a lovely and still a lovely these have been instilled, the band of dancing figures, the spotted dresses. They are dancing in the open. And then he says, till one remembers the old dictum, every part of the body and of the anima shall know religion, just and be in touch with the gods. In the early days, men smeared themselves with scarlet when they took on their sacred nature. He says Red Indians. He means the American Indians still do it, and we know that they do. We read that about the uh, uh, crazy horse and so forth. <laughs> when they wish to figure in their sacred and portentous selves, they smear the bodies all over with red. Vermilion is the color of his sacred or potent or god body. Um, so you can read all this yourself. When the Italian today goes naked in the, on the beach, it becomes a lovely dark, ruddy color, dark as any Indian. The Etruscans went a good deal naked. The end wall, 40, uh, I guess it's not, I don't know what page it is, 51 maybe, has a banqueting scene rather damaged, but still interesting. So he's talking about all the tombs here. Uh, the Tomb of the Dead is 52. On the broken wall are the dancing legs of a man. There it is. And there's more life in those Etruscan legs, fragmented as they are, than in whole bodies of men today. <laughs> that's really, that's really a quite interesting statement. Yeah. And then under the frieze of the dancers is a lotus dado. Now look, man, I'm not a big expert on dados, I never knew what they were until after I read this book, but they're phallic symbols of some kind. And there, all around the room are dolphins leaping upwards into the rippling seawall. Birds fly. Now he's going to tell you about the egg. 
He holds up the egg of resurrection, 45, which, within which the germ sleeps as the soul sleeps in the tomb before it breaks its shell. So that's what your Easter egg, because it celebrates Easter, the resurrection day, see? But it's not a Christian symbol, it's a pre-Christian symbol. Talks about the Kelix or wine bowl, page 53. That is, again, one of the charms of the Etruscan things. They really have the sense of touch. 